that, is that what that is? Yes. Oh man, I gotta be of good behavior. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they did. They did that to me at the uh, Forgiving Worship Center in New Holland a month ago, and I didn't know I was gonna be on TV or a podcast or nothing. Everybody called, "Mom, man, you're crazy." <laughs> I was like, "Oh Jesus, what did I do? Did I say some things that kind of rattle people cage, or, or they won't talk to me no more?" <laughs> I talk about the Black Panther and all the Black Lives Matter and they gave my little peanut brain interpretation of everything. But, all right. My message to everyone this morning is one of, for Marvin, myself first, because God has been dealing with me and reading the Gospels for the last, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John has been my, wow. Um, I asked God to take me back to my first love, pretty much. Because when I got born again, I stayed in John. John was my life book. I then he moved me to the most uh, awesome of the Gospels, Matthew. Then, oh, I don't know if I need to stay in front of that thing. <laughs> uh, Matthew, um, Mark, and Luke. And I say, Jesus, please, how many of you work with unsaved all day long? Anybody? So y'all know, being a Christian among those who the veil has not been lifted off the eyes, no, it's a challenge. And especially on a Monday morning. Amen? Amen. You get all spiritual up at church, and then you got to go to work with pagans on Monday. <laughs> and don't you start no singing. You know what I mean? Not at work. Some places you're not allowed to sing. <laughs> but God put a word on my soul this week, or the past couple of weeks, about loving your enemies. Anybody have any enemies? Other than church folk? <laughs> I mean, we do have some church folk that we, it's hard for us to be around them. <laughs> You know, Jesus called all of us. We're all imperfect, so we better admit the truth. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's hard to love people you never met before. <laughs> and then God tells us to love one another. Oh, goodness, help us all. But my title of my message is Love Your Enemies. My context is out of Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 36. If you have your Bibles, you, I can kind of like gradually turn to it. The reason why I want to expound about loving my enemies, I got real tested this week. I knew my week was going to be rough. Anybody ever know your week that's coming, you got to deal with some issues? And, and, and you get your praise on before you leave home? Because you know that uh, you're going to have some Goliaths and some, uh, uh, some Jezebels and some, you know, the enemies of God is going to be coming at you. You know, I um, I don't want to make a story of this, but I was asked to do a gay wedding, all right? And to make a long story short, the, the young lady that I was asked to do this wedding for, we had an understanding that I don't cross that line, okay? I do male and female. I don't do same sex. Marriage is God's idea. Ain't got nothing to do with our peanut. <laughs> if God say do it this way, we better listen or we have consequences. Some people have to learn the hard way. But my company, people in my company attacked me. All right? Y'all have been attacked for doing something against the grain? And uh, I had to deal with being attacked by my boss, by friends. I had issues this week that a uh, Caucasian lady, I went to turn this, uh, a ticket that I got from a traffic violation, and she just snatched the ticket out of my hand, and I didn't know why. So I reacted. I got my blackish on. Y'all ever get your whitish on? I mean, your, you know what I mean? Y'all know what blackish is? 
Y'all ever see black folk mad? Other than on TV? <laughs> I'm sorry. But I reacted towards her that I didn't understand it because I was sent to her office by uh, my one that makes my schedule. And I just got fired up. I almost said words that's normally out of character I don't say. But I had to dig deep. And so my boss even yelled from his office, Marvin, get to work! And I'm like, oh, man, what do you think I'm doing? I'm working. <laughs> so I, have, I was challenged about loving my enemies. from the work, in the workplace. I was, com I was, my character was tested big time. I had to dig deep with Jesus. I don't know, how many of you ever remember your first trial, <coughs> that being a Christian, when you got encountered with loving someone that don't like you? Anybody remember, can anybody remember your first Christian trial about loving your enemies? I never forget mine. I was on a bus stop in Baltimore City. And you know when you have that first love for Jesus and, and me being, not knowing I was an evangelist, but I was an evangelist, not knowing my gift God gave me, because I was so in love with Jesus. I had a bunch of tracks. I was on Utah and North Avenue in Baltimore City, and I was just handing out tracks so happily. You know what I mean? How many know when you pass out a track for Jesus, you're happy? <laughs> But how many are happy when you get your first encounter of someone that hates your Lord? I got slapped by a woman. I'm happily passing tracks out, and all of a sudden this woman came back up to me and said, handed me back the track and said, you a liar! What would you would have done? I'm six months saved. What would you have done? You just got slapped. And it wasn't your wife. And at the time, I wasn't married. And she was white. I mean, I'm sorry, Caucasian. Did I say it right? Back then, I did, all I know is she was white. I said white. <laughs> And I stood there paralyzed practically. I wanted to get my Muhammad Ali on. <laughs> I'm serious. How many ever wanted to do your moves again? How many learned how to hold your guards back in the day? You know, because you, you had enemies, you know. But then when you meet Jesus, Jesus teach you to put your guards down. Handle this my way. Well, I'm going to... Y'all turn your body. Y'all got Luke? 627, 36, chapter 6, verse 27 to uh, 27, 36. Let me just read this, and I'm going to get back into my first trial of, my, of an enemy, all right? A woman who slapped me. I'm a newly saved. She didn't know. I'm representing Jesus. I'm on North Avenue. She's got to get on a bus just like me. But she slapped me and walked away from the bus stop. I am stood there stunned. I didn't know, should I hit in the face? Should I just put foot where she twists? She just told me I'm a liar. She handed me the track and she slapped me right here. Now when, when I don't understand, I try to ask Jesus, why do I need to love somebody to slap me? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you what he said after I read this because something worse happened to him. <laughs> Amen. Amen? Well, y'all know what happened to Jesus, right? <laughs> he was brutally killed for nothing. He didn't do no wrong. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 36, he says, but I say to you that he is. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your coat, 
Do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what reward is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lead, I mean, if you lend to those whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and receive much again. But love your enemies and, and do good. Lend expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. I don't know, there's a whole lot there from Jesus to his disciples. How many of you consider yourself a disciple of Jesus? How many of you consider yourself want to do everything he said? I mean everything. Now he gave, now it's one thing to be under the Mosaic law and have 10 commands and 300 Le Levitical laws to follow under Mosaic law. Now under Jesus, you have one new command and the Beatitudes. Bless! Remember all the blessed you get if you do certain things? How many of you want to be under Mosaic or under Jesus? Which one you like the best? I'm in love with Jesus stuff. But when this stuff hit about enemies, <laughs> it's hard. I don't care how old, how young you are spiritually, when it comes to this enemy thing, it's, it's, it's a total different um, challenge as a believer. Because once you step out of Jerusalem or out of the church, I call it Church Jerusalem, and go outside, outside the walls, you're going to get confrontation for what you believe. How many of you glad that Jesus gave you faith? I mean, faith over feelings are awesome, isn't it? Because we mostly, we live by our feelings so much before we met Christ. And so when Christ asks us to put your feelings on the back burner and let faith be your guide. Faith, it takes faith to love your enemies. Y'all, I ain't even get an amen or nothing, so I, I'm just going to say it brother. again. I, <laughs> I guess I'm looking at it as an evangelist. Some of you might be prophets, teachers, apostles, ministers of helps, always helping people. When you're an evangelist, I need something because this faith to love my enemies, what is an enemy? First of all, what did Webster say? What's an enemy? Opposition. Someone in opposition to you. Come on. Someone wants to kill you. Come on. Someone who disagrees with what you stand for. What is the first thing in your what is the first thing in your personal makeup get attacked first? You ever have someone attack your ear? Say, Marvin, did you hear what they said about you? Who? who? Where? Yeah. <laughs> How many ever let someone attack your ear? Your ear? How many of you ever heard of John Bunyan's book, uh, Holy War? Y'all got to read it sometimes. The different parts, John Bunyan was the guy that wrote Pilgrim's Progress. And, uh, but John Bunyan, he, he wrote a book that I think, he used to call the ear, ear gate. Ear gate can trouble the whole body. Let somebody talk about you and you hear about it. What's the first thing, what's your first reaction? Your whole soul get troubled. You get a certain swag. You walk different. <laughs> you forget all about Jesus saved you. <laughs> Jesus said love your enemy. <laughs> that just put your name out as a curse. How many ever got your name put out as a curse? As a you ain't you ain't all that who you say you are. I, I'm still struggling with. 
about loving my enemies, I have to always go to what happened at the cross. At the cross. Even before he got to the cross, he was scourged for something, beaten brutally for something that he did not do. How many of y'all read the medical account of scourging? Or being, you know, when the Romans took the cat of nine tails and whipped our Lord's back to shreds. That's why I don't like watching that movie's uh, passion. The, the Passion. And uh, I, I'm glad they, I'm glad it was like a stump they beat Jesus on, but realistically, they did it a different way But because of Catholicism. They put, the real deal, they hung Jesus like this, let his flesh stretch. And when that cat of nine tails hit his back, just ripped it all up. That was his discipline. Every time that cat of nine tails hit his back, Jesus' back became stripes. And we all know what those stripes mean. We're healed. Come on, y'all. Do I get an amen? amen. You know. Amen. Enemies amen. of the cross. How do you identify with this? How do you challenge yourself to practice love when your enemy is bearing down on you? Your mind, your emotions, everything. It takes a lot of love to overcome hate. We all see it in our media. We see it all across this land. What hate is doing to the church, to believers. People are going through a whole lot of stuff. But you know, Jesus, he gave us the greatest example about loving our enemies. The greatest thing that Jesus did when he was hanging on that cross, he said one major word. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Do we act that way towards our enemies? This week, I said, God, please forgive my father. Forgive this lady. She's crazy. God, please. I'm in the bathroom going through and getting my Jewish man fiddle on the roof for him. Jesus, you made me a Christian. I got all these people hating me. Fiddle on the roof saying, God, why you make me a Jew? Dang. Man, the whole world hates Jews. Oh. How many of you ever get your Jewish walk on when you're going through it? Any, any of you? I mean, I, I can. All right. To do good to those who hate you. Is that a hard practice? What, what do that mean to do good to those who hate you? What is that? What good can we do when someone hates us? Do you bake them cookies? Give them turkey hill iced teas out thinking about you, you want to drink? <laughs> what do you do? I have to go in the office to this lady who snatched papers out of my hand and it was tension for two days. I couldn't get that woman out of my head. I said, she don't know who she messing with. <laughs> and God tormented me because I wasn't doing what he asked me to do as a believer. You ever get tormented by God because you ain't doing what he told you to do. Been a Christian 39, almost 40 years. And he got to take me back to my first love. I had to go to the office. Jesus wanted to leave my peanut alone. I had to go to the office. And I knocked on the lady's window. She was doing the paperwork. She's not saved. She ain't she going to do what her master told her to do. Keep that grudge. Be nasty, be mean. But me, I gotta do the total opposite. I gotta try to make peace. I gotta be a peacekeeper. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, plus other peacekeepers. In the midst of getting into a fight, Jesus is telling the church, us as believers, be a peacekeeper. I have to knock on that. Yes, Marvin. <laughs> Even the way she said my name, I wanted to get mad again. <laughs> I say, Kelly, 
I want to know what went wrong. Did I do something to you? I need to get this out in the light, out in the open. I want to know what did I do? You hurt me. What? When? In my peanut, I don't even recall doing anything to this lady. And then that whole thing about that wedding. Wow. Yes. She was harboring stuff from the pictures she sent to my phone during the time I was struggling about my uncle's dying, the cancer. And I got this text of the a wedding that reminded me of something that I didn't stand for. And I said, what nerve she got sending pictures to my phone and found out my boss put her up to doing it at the wedding and reception to take pictures of people that we all hang out in company outings of work, but I was the only one chose not to go. So she tormented me with pictures. So that's why she was mad with Marvin Lyons. That I was mad that she sent me pictures. And, I, and the girl that understood that got married went into the office and said, hey, listen, leave Marvin alone. I already know where you stand. So that's how it all, all this stuff working in the dark. I had to go in the office to find out why is she mad with Marvin? So I said, I want to make peace. Let's get out what I've done. I can, I'm tired of being tormented by my Lord who said, love your enemies. <laughs> love your enemies. Oh, damn, the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Peacekeeper, her whole spirit changed towards me. Praise God. I don't know about this woman ain't saved, but I noticed her spirit went calm. She wasn't in attack mode, but I made the move to love. I made the move to be a peacekeeper. I made the move to say I can't function in the dark. God did not call me to darkness. He called me to light. When Jesus said in this chapter, pray for those who abuse you. Spiritually, I got abused this week. My emotions got abused this week. When you try to do right, the Bible says evil lies close at hand. And that what it says? How many have been doing right lately? It seems like stuff ain't been acting right in your own world. I, I, am I the only one? Can y'all say stuff get crazy in my world sometimes? How many of you as a believer have been ever striked on the cheek? Anybody in the house? Am I the only one? Oh, you got striked? Feels good, don't it? When you get hit for Jesus. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Hey, I don't know about y'all. Jesus said something in there now. I'm sorry. I was reading in one of the Gospels. It said, Jesus said, if someone uh, uh, strikes you, he said, leap for joy. What? <laughs> How do you leap? What did that mean, leap for joy? What did that mean? How do you leap after someone just bust you up? You tell me, what kind of leap can you do? How do Caucasians leap? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I said, Jesus, you ain't fair to give us a command. John 13, 34, Jesus said, a new command I give to you, love one another. Why did he give us that command? Did he ain't had nothing to do that day in John chapter 13? That's right after he 
sow the seed in all, all the whole body of uh, men. He's in John 12, 24, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. How much fruit do we want Jesus to do through us through persecution? You know, the church grew stronger as they got persecuted. I mean, strong. How strong is the body of believers in the United States of America right now? How strong are we? Are we making are we making the news lately? Seem like Black Lives Matter and all the Matter brothers have been making the news more than the church. They told the ones out in California, "Don't you sing? Yeah, don't sing. Yeah, don't sing. Shut up! Don't play a guitar, right, bro? Yeah. <laughs> gotta be six feet, bro. You got it. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I pray that we start making the news media or something. Everybody else is making it. Why can't we make the news media? Yes. Come on. Yes. I mean, am I saying something bad? No. no. You know, do the world, Jesus say, the world will know that you are my disciples by your love. Yes. Have anybody did a shout out on them for us on the news? Anybody? I want to get a shout out. I want, I want CNN and all the negative newscasts except for Fox. Fox, I like Fox. Seems like they're the only ones telling the truth, but that's just political. I, I, I don't want to get into politics, but <laughs> I think if Fox would get us on one time, the church getting a lot of, you know, Jesus knows how to get us lifted, elevated. Amen? Amen. John chapter 15, verse 18 to 22, if you could turn here with me. Are y'all following me about this love your enemies? Am I? Yes. Am I losing anybody? You know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to sow any condemnation or nothing like that. Uh, I think that God wants us to get ready for persecution. And how do we act when we get it? Are we going to act like the world, eye for an eye, two for a tooth? If you strike me on the cheek, I'm going to strike you. Or are we going to turn the other side and say, man, just knock that one out of the place too. Why, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, really, when I first had my encounter been getting slapped, and I read that first, I said, Jesus, this ain't fair! This ain't fair! Why do I turn the other side? I like my black face! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I said black face. I'm, black face. I'm, I'm, I don't get bruised. Y'all bruised before me. Black <laughs> I'm sorry. It ain't a racial thing. Please. Y'all, all right. I love y'all. Y'all know me, so I'm just being Marvin, okay? <laughs> and John 15, verse 18 to 22, Jesus said this. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Jesus said, why am I so surprised that I got attacked at work this week? I ain't at church. See, at church, nobody attacks nobody. Only under the counter and not disguise attacks, you know. <laughs> but all out assaults don't happen at church. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you go outside of church, uh-oh, you get to find out who you really are. You are light shining in darkness. <laughs> you ain't joking, bro. I mean, Jesus did say, let your light do what? No, did he just say that because he wasn't as busy that day to talk to his disciples? You know, Jesus said a lot of things, and everything he said, not one iota, is, has dropped to the ground. Jesus meant everything he said about the world and how the world treat his church. Because they did the same thing to him. They did the same thing to Jesus. And you know who hated Jesus the most? Them religious ones. Oh, them church folk again. <laughs> oh, man. They, they had to twist Paul's arm to discipline Jesus. 
Rome didn't want nothing to do with it. Rome said, man, I got to wash my hands of this man. Man, I suffered much over this man. The lady, his pilot's wife said, please leave that man alone. <laughs> you know, Jesus have a way to attack the world in ways we can't even see. When they start treating us crazy, Jesus know how to get crazy too. You messing with the apple of his eye. We're like little New Jersey over in Philly, physical Israel. I mean, Jerusalem right now. You know when people start make, messing with us, God know how they work? God know what he's doing with each one of us when it comes to loving your enemies. Jesus spelled it out to us. You're not of the world, so don't try to fit in. Don't try to act like you're of the world. You got too much light and so much Shekinah glory on you. So I got Shekinah. Did I say it right? Yep. I did it. African style. Shekinah. I don't have a Jewish tongue. I got a brother's tongue. That's Shekinah glory. How many look in the mirror this morning and say, Woo, man, I'm bright. I'm in trouble. I better not get to a place of darkness. I'm going to stick out like a sore thumb. Amen? In Matthew 5, verse 43 to 48, how many of you don't like this message? Be honest. Because you, you, you live in a peaceful little cabin and house and nobody mess with you. Huh? Nobody mess with you in your nice little abode. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, if you got a place that they have a lot of peace, it's good. Jesus said, live peaceably with everybody. But he told the church, get out there and get beat up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like Jesus telling the church. Jesus commanded us to go in Matthew 28. He said, go. What do go mean? Stay in your peaceful neighborhood? <laughs> Stay in your peaceful little, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, come on, help me. I'm, I'm I, look, I'm an evangelist, so I don't want to make nobody feel like guilty or nothing like that. But listen, I'm always put, sticking my foot in my mouth. I'm always offending people. All the time. I said, Jesus, why you make me an evangelist? I want to be a pastor and a prophet. All, all my job is to stay in the church and prophesy. I ain't got to go out there and prophesy to unsaved. They don't know what the world we talk, I'm talking about. Thus says the Lord. What? What? Do, what? <laughs> but right now, you know, I think the evangelists who are doing the work of an, evan of an evangelist. Wow. Jesus want to attack the world right now. We ain't living in a, a, one of the most powerful times in history of our world that Jesus wants the church to shine. Yes. Yes. It's the world is dark. When darkness is dark, what pulls to push darkness? Light. Light. I mean, I saw for the first time this week a sunset. I had just dropped my wife off because uh, I went dropped off at the airport because I said I'm going to leave 6, 5.30 in the morning at BWI. And I was driving up 83, and I saw how light pushes darkness. Yes. Boy, what a, I haven't seen that in a while. That is a miracle. God made, in the book of Jeremiah, it said God made a covenant with night and day. God made a covenant with those two elements. And he said, won't you understand my covenant between these two? He said, I will not remove my love from you. Y'all didn't hear me. Those two covenants, God promised, I will give you darkness physically and I will give you light. He said, I made a covenant with those two. I brought those two into existence. He said, as long as you can get that in your peanut, he said, I'm not going to re remove my love for you. Come on. I, I don't have a verse. It's in Jeremiah. He made a covenant. With you and I to love us to death. To death. How many felt God's love this week? Yes. How many love it when he hugs you and kiss you and yes. then he tell you go outside yes. and play? Yes. <laughs> yes. There's one thing getting kissed and hugged at home like the church building. 
He give you a big old kiss, big old hug. Then he said, go out and tell him what I said. That's a challenge. That's scary. And if you're an evangelist, that's really scary. Because you're doing something kind outside of your comfort. Amen? Amen. Matthew 5, 43, 48. Let me read this, because I'm kind of saying the same thing, but I want to just say what Matthew's account. He said, if you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you will be sons of your father who is in heaven. Sons. How many like, stick your chest out. I mean, that's men. We, women, well, y'all got issues right there. <laughs> men, and not like looking in the mirror and see, I'm old now, so all my junk dropped. So, you know, get a certain age, junk drop. <laughs> you ain't too impressed with your chest and, and your abs because they said bye about 10 years ago. See you. Glory to your son's abs because my boys went to the military. And they did through the boot camp and stuff. You probably understood, Lee. You, you see your boy, he got rocks in his stomach all up in here. He said, man, I wish I had that. Jonah, how you get them rock? Dad, I'm doing my push-ups constantly. You know, I got to stay physically. I said, wow, what if God put that kind of pressure on us physically, us old folk? <laughs> God is asking us to pray for our enemies so that we can be sons of our Father in heaven, sons and daughters. That's a total different mindset. The new covenant is a total different mindset. For 4,000 years, God's people had to fight and shed blood physically because their enemies hated them. They hated Israel. They still do. The brother. Philistines, the Sadducees, the, all the seas, the the Ammonites, the Mennonites, the Ammonites, and all the knights. Man, they hate Israel. And David mustered up some of the baddest armies. He has some of the baddest armor bearers, Joab, all them boys. They used to take their enemy and dash them in pieces. But Jesus come on the scene. He said, let me tell y'all something. I got a new strategy. I don't want y'all dashing your enemies in pieces and ripping their hearts out and circumcising them and all that stuff. <laughs> Try to make them Jews. He said, I want you to love the people that's trying to take over your soul. Pray for them. Y'all challenge? I mean, yeah. this is scary stuff. I know it's scary for me this week because I had to deal with, nobody was black at my company, so I had nobody to get on my side. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. In John chapter 14, verse 18 to 24, Jesus said something to all of us. And I don't know if y'all remember John chapter 14. How many ever memorized John chapter 14? The first words of John chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Y'all like that? How many get troubled hearts sometimes? I mean, my heart get troubled, especially when I'm talking about loving enemies. Man, you crazy? Man, my whole body get all shaken up. <laughs> Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses uh, 18 to 24, we just turn to it, just a little, give you a little glimpse of God's heart towards us. He said, this is what Jesus said when, it, you get, when I got it confronted with my enemies this week. Jesus showed me this passage. He said in John 18, 14, 18, he said, Marvin, I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. When we're dealing with our enemies, we got to understand we have a covenant with a God that's bigger than this world. That's right. And when God says, 
I will not leave you alone desolate. He didn't say it because he had nothing better to do in John chapter 14. He saw everything coming at him. He saw everything coming at Peter who denied him. He saw everything coming at him. His own disciples, Judas, who was handing Jesus over to the enemy. He saw everything coming at his children. And Jesus told his future children, I'm going to be there for all of you. Just have faith. I ain't leaving you desolate. I ain't leaving you alone. I'm going to come to you. How many of us challenge Jesus to come on our behalf when stuff gets crazy? We need the presence of Jesus showing up. Didn't Jesus say, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe? We're blessed if we haven't seen him physically and we believe in him. It's, a, it's hard to believe something you ain't seen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, the third, the Trinity, the third Godhead. Thank God he haven't got lifted off to this planet yet. Amen. It's going to be a real hellhole when God's Holy Spirit, the third Godhead, come, gets off of this planet. It's going to be like beasts in the field. I pray that God get us out of here before that happens. Amen. I, that's just me. I don't want to be around when darkness covered the whole land. When God, when he take us as a church in the resurrection, when we get changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, I can't wait for that day because that day is going to be a glorious day. Amen. For us as believers, being changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye is the greatest promise that Jesus ever gave us as a church. Amen where our persecution and all our duties he gave us cease and we be standing in his glorious presence with our new bodies. What do you think you're going to say to God when you see your new body? How, how, how awesome are you going to start talking to God when you see that you got a body that don't get decayed anymore, that don't get old? I can't wait to see my abs in heaven. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm stuck on abs and dunking. So I said, Jesus, my mansion, please have a court so I can play basketball again. <laughs> Jesus said he's going to give us our heart's desire, didn't he? He did. I don't know. I don't know about y'all. Jesus said he's going to fulfill everything that he promised us. And heaven's going to be beautiful. So why not fight for it now? We got to keep fighting. I'm 62 and I still see Jesus... I still say these same words sometimes. Why do you make me an evangelist? <laughs> Why don't you make me one of them soft men of God? <laughs> I mean, you know, the ones that's peaceful and don't do, I, I won't say what. I see. <laughs> Why I can't play a violin, Jesus? <laughs> no. That's a group of guys coming to my prison one time to watch over his church group. And I was like, Jesus, why didn't you make me to play a violin or something? Like, why I got to be on the front line infantry, always be, got to shoot my, 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 my cannon at people all the time. Why can't I just shoot a violin like that dude? <laughs> no. But we all have our precious gift from God. When Jesus said, I will not leave you desolate, he said, in a little while, church, in a little while, it said, yet in a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live and you live also. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and my Father in me, and I in you. For he who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas not as scared said, Lord, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. How many of you love Jesus? How many of you want to keep his word? If Jesus said, love your enemies, stop questioning your brains. If Jesus said, go outside of Jerusalem, outside of church, and start getting beat up a little bit so when a real beating up come, you'll be ready. When it's time for you to put your life on the line, 
I've been hearing a lot of talk now about this new world order, the chip being planted in people's skin, rice chips and all this crap. It's all over the place right now. I say, Lord, is your church going to take a stand against Revelation 13? The kingdom of darkness, the teen kingdom of the Antichrist is coming. It's talk every day. They use a virus like Corona to scare the church into fear. Fear has gripped our whole land. Jesus is asking the church to live by faith. Every time I turn on the news, all I see is fear. I turn that thing off. I say it's robbing me from every spiritual promise that God has given us. Come on. It's robbing us. The thief is stealing from us. I say, come on, boy, give me some of that faith. Yeah, I give you fear. Live on it. Come on. Put the mask on. Put the mask on. Put this on. Put Man, if Jesus wanted us to have a mask, he gave us one. Oh, I'm sorry. He would drop the whole bunch of them out of heaven. Like, like man, they drop down. <laughs> <laughs> like water from a rock. But <laughs> Jesus know the whole civilization going to die. He just dropped ma eternal masses. <laughs> I know we all need them because I ain't trying to get his mask. But hey, I'm tired of being afraid, folks. I'm tired of walking around. I, I, I left my mask in my truck to go into Turkey Hill, get me some juice because I was thirsty. I said, oh, I'm sorry I left my mask. He said, Mom, you cool, man. Go get your juice. <laughs> I was like, why, Mom? We got to be mindful of this crazy covering. I can't show my teeth no more. <laughs> I like to smile. Bad enough, they told me when I got my new passport, they say, you cannot smile. <laughs> I said, what? I done spent $160? And I can't smile. <laughs> that's my character. That's my personality. I love to smile. I got to look like I'm a black parent. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why are you making me look like something that I never, I'm never a grouch, mad looking person. Can I smile? No, it's for the state. <laughs> I said, this is. And then when I get my passport, guess what's in front of it? A chip. I <laughs> put the, 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 the debit chip. I said, they go, they try to sneak this chip any way they can sneak it. For $160. But my face looking so serious. Folks, I want to just challenge everybody. Yes. Are we ready if the world one morning you wake up, like one morning we woke up and we couldn't go outside, when they shut down schools, colleges, shut down restaurants, work places, the government, the president gave the governor's authority to shut everything down. First time ever in the history of humanity since I've been alive that everything got shut down. What is going to happen if we wake up one morning and they're commanding everybody everywhere to get a chip and a forehead on their hand? You can't buy or sell. You can't do nothing. What are you going to do? I already settled it in my mind. You ain't put nothing here or here. Could Jesus say, don't do it? Amen. Jesus said that. What are you going to do? Your enemies are telling you to take something that God said, uh-uh, you didn't cross the line. Certain lines you don't cross. Same-sex marriage. You don't cross that line. Chip in your forehead or hand. Don't cross it. Because your neighbors and your people are going to say, man, you got to eat today. You got to eat. Well, can we been reading the Bible? God said when his children are hungry, he flies some ravens in and brings some food. Didn't he say he's going to fly some, some birds? <laughs> when Elijah, or who, I don't know who it was, got hungry. Oh, dang, that popped. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, I keep forgetting about that thing. <laughs> we need it, brother. Folks, I encourage everyone. I'm just, 
Our enemies are going to cause us to do things to cross the line. Where do we, how are we going to stand? Yes, we kill them with love, but my love is not taking something that God said don't do. God is asking all of us, Revelations chapter 12, to let the words of our testimony overcome the enemy. Yes. How many love your testimony? How many got a good testimony? Because, yes. you know, sins being forgiven is a testimony. How many remember when you was old grouch and had all that sin on you? I mean, I know we've all been saved a long time, but I remember when I was a pothead. Yeah. I remember when I loved my weed and I loved that fornicating. Y'all know what fornicating is? I know people in Africa they don't do that no more. <laughs> Everybody in Africa is saved, you know. They, nobody has sex before marriage. Okay, how about this? Adultery. Anybody ever hear any of your close friends having adultery? No, they stopped doing that, didn't they? Didn't they? If they got enough churches in Pennsylvania now, nobody commits adultery no more. Hey, Amen? Is that, am I just saying, is that? Oh, okay, everybody's. Some of us been saved from adultery. Some of us have been saved from fornication. Some of us been saved if they had a gay lifestyle. Some of us was Mary Madeline's. Some of us were demoniacs that Jesus say come out of him. Clothed in his right mind. And Jesus would tell him, go tell them what I've done for you. How many of us Jesus have gave the command to go tell them what I've done for you? Some of us have forgotten that he told you that. Some of us got busy with other stuff. Which stuff ain't wrong, but we got to keep our priorities on the call of God on our lives. The call of we being lights to the world. The call of it's time to kill our enemies with love. Kill them! <laughs> you, it's hard to fight when somebody loves you. I like, when I saw that lady's facial expression and attitude change, I said, Jesus, I'm going to kill people with my love. I'm, I can't work in the dark no more. I can't do it. All right, I'm going to close it up. I know my time is up. I want to challenge everybody. If you have struggling with this whole precept or this new thing God gave us, law or precept, whatever, Jesus, just love your enemies and pray for those who abuse you, pray for those who hurt you, pray for those who... Uh, oh, this one, I forgot this one. Jesus said, woe to you when men speak well of you. Why did he say woe to you? Why did he say that? Because you're flowing down the stream with everybody else. If you look at sports or news, whatever, everybody wants somebody to say something good about him. Oh, that's a wonderful man. Oh, he's so wonderful lady. Oh, she's so fine. And he's so handsome. Oh, he's so wonderful. Really? You looking at that exterior. How that heart look. When Chris speak that word last week about the soul, what is the condition of your soul? What is the condition of our, the world we live in, people we live around? What is the condition? Do they need the love of God poured in them so that they can learn how to do what God commanded us to do, love our enemies? All right, I'm going to close it out. I'm sorry, I went on the apple trail again. I was encouraged this week to take the whole armor on this week, and they, and they work. Amen. How many like your armor? Yes. Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Yes. See, we got to take on his strength because our junk is, my junk is messed up. I ain't got no more junk. Them things. I see some of the young athletes, the young men that got all that junk. I say, keep living. That junk going to fall to the ground. If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. You ain't, I better say, if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Your junk going to drop like everybody else drop. And then once it all drop, there's only one place left for you, the cemetery. <laughs> and then you could become maggot food. I mean, I'm just sorry. Well, some like to get toasted in the oven. <laughs> I was driving by the Chip Snyder's funeral home the other day, and I saw the smokestack on again. Because me and Chip, uh, I've done a lot of funerals for him, and I just did my bosses. And 
I said, Chip, that ain't fair. You build a crematorium right across the street from an elderly home. <laughs> I said, it's one thing to have a funeral home and a restaurant and a bank, but you don't want to put uh, the most violent thing you could do to a body. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm old school, I'm, I raised, I mean, some people, because of this pandemic, like cremation, all right? Well, me, I had a mom and dad that was really dear to my soul. I saw a cremation, I couldn't believe it. It's too violent. Just put them in the ground, let the world do what it needs, let nature do what it do. But because of money and finances, I understand. But Jesus is asking us all, take care of what's inside of us. Sometimes we think that we're not dealing with flesh and blood. You know, it's all spirit. People are run by spirit. And visit some funeral homes. You try to offend a dead person, see how far you get. <laughs> Just start yelling at the dead body. I hate you, why are you dying? <laughs> say something! No. Nah. They did. They can't say nothing. I want to pray for everybody. If you can stand up, I, I got to end this day. I want to go on. But my exhortation, encouragement to everyone here is to practice loving your enemy, practice living kingdom agenda, practice start getting persecuted. Just practice someone stepping on your coins. I say practice, because the real persecution is coming. It's more closer to us now than we first believed. The devil is about to unleash hell on the, on the whole world. And are you preparing when you get your coin stepped on? Are you getting prepared because you love Christ so much that my might pull your beard out and slap you in the face like they did Jesus? They pulled Jesus' beard out. They spit in his face. They did every foul practice to our Lord. So what you make you think you, too, you better than our Lord? Jesus said, if they persecuted me and took me to the rack, they're going to do the same to you. Are you getting ready? Some of us praying that we die peacefully. Nothing happens to us. But as long as you have that name that is above every name written in your forehead, persecution is coming. Yes. Whether you like it or not, you got a light that's shining in the dark. And darkness hate light. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I thank God that I'm not, I'm, I told my wife the other day, baby, I'm going to keep talking about Jesus. I don't care if they don't like me. I say, I didn't get saved to be light. I got saved to preach the gospel. Amen. 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 Like is something that the world want. Uh, I ain't even going to go there. But <laughs> y'all bow your head. I'm going to pray for everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Father, we thank you that you gave us the greatest treasure on this earth, love one another. You gave us the greatest gift on this planet, the Holy Spirit. Father, you gave us the most purest book to read and get it in our spirits, and it's the Holy Bible. Father, I pray that you take this canon and you put it inside of our soul and help us to walk accordingly as you walk. Father, please give us the boldness to cherish, prepare for persecution. Give us the boldness and courage to love those who hate us. Give us the boldness and courage when people are grumpy about us. Father, help us to handle things like you handle things. Jesus, for many years we will always ask each other, that, that slogan, what will Jesus do? God, I see that in this day and age and time we're all living in, what would Jesus do all around us? Father, give us the grace. I plead your blood over every person in this room. I plead your blood over them. I pray that you keep them free from diseases, sickness, death, hell, God, I pray that every vow practice in this world, I pray that you will keep everyone in this room heart clean and pure. Jesus, you said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. God, I pray that everyone in this room stay pure, stay clean. I pray that everyone in this room allow joy to win the world. Father, we all got something that this world needs. 
and that's a relationship with the Son of God. Thank you, Father, for raising from the dead, and thank you, Father, for allowing me to share my heart about love and my enemies. Yes. I pray that we all get into practice because we're all going to be encountered with something that's going to uh, go against the tide of our everyday life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. <coughs>